my friend, to Dominion International. Thomas Manton IV is respected worldwide as a prophetic voice to this generation. Forgiveness is more for you than it is for the other person, if you really understand the church, the king of kings. He's the firstborn of many brethren. He's the elder of the elect. He's also of God. So open your heart and receive this heavenly impartation from God's mind and heart through this dynamic message. Thomas Manton IV will be back to pray with you at the end of this message. All right, lift your hands right now and say, Lord, thank you for your, thank you for your ability. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think somebody maybe never said that in their life. They just go through life wondering, what do we do now? With a big question mark. This is a problem. You don't know what you're doing or how you're doing things. How are you going to get anywhere? Amen. And how many know in a sick society, there's a lot of sickness and you have to go through a lot of mess to get to the good thing. You understand? Somebody told me, don't say that, prophet. People get offended. Well, I'm going to be a prophet whether you like me or not. How many appreciate the real voice of God and I'm not going to change? Okay? So, you know, if you're not going to get used to what God wants to do, then you're not going to have what he wants to do. And I want to say something else. If you don't have me, then you'll revert back somewhere else. You understand that? Because there are people that say they're prophets. One guy came here two weeks ago. I read his website. My God, it was a bunch of rubbish. I don't even know if God spoke. And there are people that are compromised were there in the meeting. And they were saying, oh, this is a prophet. I, he, he said nothing to Kenya. Hmm? Hello? Then you had the other one run, the other ones run through here and mess the people up with a wrong spirit. Is that what you want? Is that what you deserve? And all of my friends from America, I didn't want to say this, but I need to say it and get it off my chest, then we can go into the word, okay? And um, all of my friends from America went back disgusted. T D Jakes, Benny Hinn, Joyce Meyer, Eddie Long, should I keep going? R. W. Shambach. Your church world did them all dirty. Every single one of them shook something on their shoes as they were leaving. You notice they haven't been back. And can I tell you, you're not going to abuse this American. This American was sent by God to help you. And if you don't appreciate that and really get it together, God's going to just take this boy on to the world that's waiting for him. And y'all can just go right back where you started. Amen? No, don't, don't say amen. Is that what you want? Well, how many, you know, see, this is the time where God, ha not, not just God, because God is good. How many know God is good? Don't give me no preachy religious stuff right now. I don't want to hear it even right now. Okay? God is good. He's too good. He's excellent. Oh, the problem is never with him. It's only with people. Even the devil you can't blame the devil for everything on the judgment day. God will say, you're, you're ignorant. You crazy. You think God could talk to people like that? You think Jesus is the nice guy with the sheep over his shoulder saying, oh, praise the Lord. You know, the way they painted him. No, the Bible doesn't say he's coming back like that. He's coming back with fire in his eyes on a white horse with a sword drawn with the amen, the faithful, and the true tagged on his side, ready to destroy multitudes of people that are wicked and the whole Armageddon thing is going to happen. How many know God has another side to him that we don't always think is so great? But it's righteous and it's just. Now the people that say he's the God of doom and gloom and judgment and destruction, no. That's a wrong spirit. I don't have that spirit. I, I've only come to say, you know, people need to be empowered, liberated, raised up. Have you heard me preaching these things? They're good, and we're going to do some of that today. Oh, the Lord confirmed some things, but he kept saying over and over how important it is for people to rise up to connect with the vision, not just a man's vision, but what he's doing right now how many know he's trying to do this thing for you but are you really cooperating with him now now some of you that are here you're really great people you're eagle saints amen you're not chickens and turkeys and goats and wolves and thieves and liars you're you, you know amen you're really saved how many are really saved how many are praying you'll get really really saved in case you you know 
Some, somebody thought, well, when I, when I accept Jesus, that's it. No, that's just the starting moment. How many know when you got born from your mama, that wasn't it? Okay, now I'm in the earth, so that's it. I don't have to do anything. See, we don't even understand the natural analogy. Someone say salvation demands growth. Oh, yes, I prove it to you with the Bible. If I, if I can't give you the Bible, I don't have any business saying it. John 3 says, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So the sight realm is the entrance place of the beginning. Someone say sight is the beginning. When you see something, that's a beginning place. It's an entrance door. So God is not just um, say, well, once saved, always saved, you know, the grace message. Anything you do is okay. God will just eradicate it. No, no, no. You have to live according to his plans. But another thing is Paul said it's not by works lest you can boast yourself as a man or a woman. No, it's by the grace and the gift of God, but we do have to do a lot of things. Amen? And God is looking for people that he can really power and entrust with things. He's looking to raise up leaders who have that other spirit, like Joshua and Caleb. How many know if God can trust you with his wisdom then things will really begin to happen in good ways for you. How many, know, how, how many know the blessings of God are really tangible? Oh, yes. <clears throat> how many want them? See, you got to start with a desire. Like salvation, receiving the gift is an entrance place. The Bible also says in John, in another place, the spirit goes where he wants. Who can know his mind, you know? We can, though. See, some people stop there and say, God is too mysterious. But in Isaiah 48, verse 16, the Bible says, Come and hear me, for I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. God is a revealer of his deep secrets. Amen. Psalm 25, I think it's the 13th verse, somewhere around there, says, The secret of the Lord is with those who fear him. Malachi talked about the book of remembrance that was written for those uh, amongst those who fear him. And God is the revealer. Amen. 1 Corinthians 2 9 says, I had not seen or ear heard the great things that God's prepared for those who love him. But the next verse says, But he's revealed these things to us by his spirit. See, some people stop there and say, God is too vast, it's too much. We can never attain, we can never understand, but that's not true. I said that's not true. We can. Someone say, I can and I will. Come on, people of God, are you ready for this thing? I can and I will. God is looking to raise up a mighty army of people. Not people that are inept and, 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 and void of understanding. People that are brilliant, that they can see things every way they need to be. Lift your hands and say, that's me, I know. You, know. you know what? You'll get very rich. You'll get very favored by heaven. You'll get very blessed if you can catch his vision and flow with it. Someone say, I'm catching the vision and I'm going to flow with it. Again, I got to say it again so we understand clearly what this is about. This is not about man. This is about the Holy Ghost. How many know... What God is attempting to do here is truly a move of God. It has nothing to do with any denomination, organization, church. Matter of fact, matter of fact, it's man and crazy devils that fight it. So it's definitely not about those ones. But then there's an opening. <laughs> there's a, a career advancement program of, from heaven to the earth. Amen. There, there's a job opening, although we don't have any jobs to give. In the Bible, they're, they're, it's, a, it's a collection of blessings and cursings for obedience or rebellion or disobedience. How many want to be on the obedience side? I certainly am. My God, as much as I can be. And, you know, it's pretty obvious, I think. Lift your hand and say, Lord, I want the job. I mean, no, 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 no. no. I want, let me. <laughs> I, want the, I want the position from you. See, see, I got to keep preaching. It's a little bit laborious for me and tedious, but you know, I'm, I don't mind because as long as I, 
As long as I feel the anointing and the juice from him, I know I'm doing service for him and he blesses me for that. I have blessings I don't talk about. And it's not just money. It's lots of money, but I have, I have, God blesses me in ways I can't talk about. Hmm? It would take too long. We'd never get out of here today. And, and so as long as I feel that, I'm happy, I'm happy to do it. But we have to drill this in for a while because, because I think there's been a lack of belief and a lack of faith. Hmm? How many are tired of that? Amen. I hope I make you mad. I hope you go home and cry or something. Because until you get mad about something, you're not going to change it. There's a principle of wisdom that says, if you're going to put up with it, shut up about it. How does that work in Swahili? Now, Yamaza, accept what, permit what, I got to learn more words now. One of my guys was writing down in pencil about 40 Swahili expressions. I'm going really, to really mess you up in weeks to come. You better be here. Oh, yeah, we're going to have fun in the house. I'm learning more. Uh, but they need to type it for me, and I could put it in my wherever. And... Praise the Lord. How many want the position that God has? Oh, he'll, you know what? We got to believe it first. See, in a sick society, S-I-C-K, sick meaning ailed, infirmed, weakened, polluted, poisoned, because of corruption, because of um, lack of integrity, because people think they had to do tricky things to make it, then they think that's the way to go. But they don't, anybody that lives like that doesn't know God. They don't know God. Some say they don't know God. I dare say some people that even come to churches or meetings, they don't really know God. They can sing, Hakuna, Hakama, Wei, Wei, Hey, Hey, do this. Mm, 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 mm. And they still don't know God. I'm going to raise me up a baby's choir, get all the babies up there, put some nice uniforms on them, you know, like those cute little dresses. Mm, 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 mm. Do all that. <laughs> like, like, you're, like you're digging for gold. I like that stuff. And if we don't have the singers that can do it, we'll just get the CD, amen? And someone that recorded it with all the voices. I, I like that stuff. But knowing God is a trust issue, okay? I've been talking about how to receive the blessings of God, keys to experiencing them, receiving them. This is very important. It also ties very much together with the laws of success and also the power to get wealth and wealth creation and we, we it's all intertwined somehow Be, because God has a plan to make us prosperous but only if we serve him correctly how many want to learn the keys and the laws and the ordinance and the principles and the dictates and and just what just like push the button and the blessing comes out wouldn't that be great but when you've been downtrodden First of all, by, you know, animism, maybe from way back in the early days on the African continent, and then, you know, the British colonization, and then trying to get out of that. See, some of the corrupt practices had to be in a, in a, in a hidden realm in the beginning because there were other people that were ruling over you. So the only way you could have your own thing is to, you couldn't do things out in the, out in the open. You had to do it under the table. Amen. This is prophetic revelation here. You understand? Lift your hands if you understand me. You might not have thought of that, but the Lord thought about it. When God's really in your life, you break out of systems. Am I preaching good uh, already here? Uh, amen. You break out of cycles and mindsets and philosophies and things that have been set up for you to tell you this is the way you go. Now, 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 now you don't just get there first day by having a little wishful thought and maybe I could get free of this. No, that's maybe an entrance place like I was saying before. But God Almighty, when His anointing manifests in your life, he has things you never even imagined that you might not have even have pre-thought 
that'll just come upon you because of the levels that you've crossed up to. The, 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 the rungs of the ladder that you've climbed up. So many up, so many up, so many up, so many up. 25 times, 150 times, 10,000 times up. And you're so high and you look around and you think, you know what, some of this is unfamiliar to me. But then God begins to just drop other things on you. That's part of the package of that level. Isaiah 46 talks about a man that would be sent from a far country to another nation to, to set things in order there. And the verse starts out, is it 46, 9 to 13, the story in there. The verse starts out talking about a bird of prey from the east. The Egyptian eagle, how many know that's an eastern bird of prey? And there's a sign that God's been giving. They come to my house, and I just saw one fly here. They have brown wings. Not the hawks now. They're not the hawks. They're not the ibises. They're not the hornbills. I'm talking about that was an eagle. Did you see it? Did, somebody, did anybody see it but me? I, don't, I think I only, only, only I saw it. And the size of them, they're twice the size of any, any other bird. That's how you also know. They're a bit brown on the outside, and then they have those different colored feathers. I, I just saw it right here. Lift your hands. Thank you, Lord, for signs and wonders. And they're very rare, those birds. They don't just go anywhere. You, you can't, you know what? I've never been able to capture one on film. Because the minute, the, the minute it takes you, even if you're organized and your camera's right on your desk, the seconds it takes you to get your camera and focus, they're gone. They don't hang around. They come, they look for something, they go, ooh, the next thing. They just keep moving. That's why we have that great analogy of, in Isaiah 40, you'll mount up with wings as eagles. Amen. Eagles, if you study an eagle, they have very many characteristics that are just so, you know, <laughs> so far beyond other birds. Lift, <laughs> oh, I'm going to hurt you right now. I'm going to help you and hurt you, hurt you at the same time. Lift your hand and say, I'm better than other birds. Amen. How many know if you're an eagle, you don't, you're not like a chicken flapping on the ground, can't even get off the ground? You're not even like a flamingo, just even though they're beautiful, the pink flamingos. I just saw them, you know, some days back. I went through Kenya a bit and take a little time to enjoy the nature. And uh, I saw them there. They're beautiful. But even them, they sit in the water so long. But the eagles, they fly. They're birds of prey. They go everywhere. Amen. I, you know, that tells me something. Movement is power. Someone say movement is power. Life is a, is, a, is a production factory. The more you move, the more you learn. Sometimes you hit a stone wall. Sometimes you hit a closed door. Sometimes you, you make a mistake. Sometimes you, um, you know, hit an obstacle or have problems. And, and you say, why did I have so much activity that I had to learn some things the hard way? But even that helps you in, in the end. Even that makes you better as you go along. The worst way to be is to sit around doing nothing, just hoping that the next thing you do is going to work. No, we need to be people of activity. And movement, even, even the laws of health, work by movement. Movement of your body, exercise, moving your organs, amen. The heart pumping and the blood flowing. Also movement of food and the assimilation of the digestion process. Uh, of the nutrients and all that through your body. Movement is power. Lift your hands up right now. The Bible says the sluggard was afraid so he didn't move. So in salvation, you know, the Greek word sozo, S-O-Z-O, -O, is, the, is the biggest benefit package you can ever receive. Oh, yes. Someone say, oh, yes. And uh, it's the Greek word sozo, which really is the Greek word for salvation, and it means the full benefit package. The full benefit package, soundness of life, deliverance from death, deliverance from fear, deliverance from poverty, deliverance from lack, deliverance from perversion and alcoholism and drug abuse and curses and abuse and all kinds of problems. It's all in there. Deliverance from spiritual death. The fear of man, the fear of the devil, also poverty, anything that would bind people is taken care of in the salvation package.
and pray that word out of commission, then you better get busy in intercession and pray. But God said it's so bad. The nation has been so devastated. And the systems that are in there of the devil and everything else has crept so deep. And, and, and you know, God could... See, here's what I'm trying to say in this message too. God could give it back to you in five minutes. As a matter of fact, less than five minutes. Man, 0.5 of a second. The twinkling of an eye. That's when he wants to do everything. You understand? The nature of God is good. El Shaddai is one of his names, which means more than enough. But I have to tell you something. That doesn't even really fully describe him. He's not just more than enough. He's too much. Let me give you a Bible. Moses says, show me your glory in Exodus 33. God said, I can't. You cannot see me and live. Which means he's too much. Lift your hands and say, Lord, you're too much. Amen. His nature is good. He's a father. He's a loving father. He wants to bless his children. He wants to give us so much. But it's because of the problems and the devils that people have allowed in systems, institutions, and nations that keep him back from doing it. So it's not the fact that can God do it in a minute. Oh yes, Second Chronicles 7.14 says, If my people call by my name will humble themselves and pray, I'll hear from heaven and I'll come and heal their land. When did he say it will happen? As quick as possible. Here's another thing. Isaiah 66 verse 8 says, can a nation be born in a day? The answer is obviously yes. But when Zion travailed, she gave forth birth to her children. So that means there's a process of birthing that has to happen, of intercession. Uh, are you seeing this? John 15, 7 says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you'll ask what you will and it'll be done for you. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, <laughs> you'll ask what you want and you'll get it. Mark eleven twenty four 24 says, whatever things you desire when you pray, believe you receive them and you shall have them. Whatever things you desire when you're praying, believe you receive them and you'll have them. It's, and here's another one. It's the Father's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. Another place, Jesus said, if you being evil... Are giving good gifts to your children, how much more the Father wants to give you every good gift and even the Holy Ghost. Psalm 84 verse 11 said he'll withhold no good thing from those who walk uprightly before him. Somebody give God a praise right now and shout, shout, shout for the blessing, shout because you got the victory, shout because the Holy Ghost has it all in his hands for you. Come on somebody, I want somebody to get radical and give him a praise. Get out of your seat and give him a prayer. He's here. I said he's here. He's here. And he has it all for us. So what's our problem? We don't believe. We can't think right. We need a change of our mind. We need a transformation and a renewing of your mind. This is the issue. We need to hear the real gospel. Come on, give him a praise and a shout right now. Go ahead. Go right ahead right now. Sister, that spirit that's troubled you so much is coming off you today. You came to the right place. Lift your hands high right now. Father, the fire, release it right now. Touch! That's it right there. That's it. That's it. That's it. Prophetically, this whole nation is about to go free from this spirit that, that have kept people so troubled, so I, I, please forgive me now, I love you. Ignorant, ignorant meaning not cognizant of the better way. The heavens have been closed. But God's about to open them now. And you know, there's been a, an, an impregnation in the last year where there was a, a conception of something new. Not just to speak to the nation, and we've done that. We've given all the details about the elections, what's going to happen next, the, where the course of the nation is going to go, and all these things. But you know, the Lord, the Lord has shown me something here that now is going to become, is going to come an apostolic reformation. And, and I want to say, God's not going to play with people. Anybody that's compromising in His name, anybody that's playing games with His servants and bringing pain, uh, and bringing harm and danger, a thousand times will come back to them. The day of judgment is being released here in the church and in the society of people that think they could just do anything to the people of God. God is going to take it up 
up, up the cause and fight. My dear, the fire, receive it right now. Let her go, let her go. Such wealth, such wealth. Hundreds of thousands will turn to millions. God says across the nation there'll be the watering of many people with the good things of God. Fire! Whoo! Shaita! That's it. God says, I'm going to use you. And on the other side of this process, you're coming out with the refiner's fire even to give to others, says the Lord. Lift your hands, dear. Thank you.